Yeah, so. Sweet. All right, so what is DFFML? All right, the goal here is that we've got this thing that makes machine learning easy to use. It helps us make data sets. It helps us make machine learning models. And it makes it easy to go use like those models once you've trained them. All right, and so the basic flow of machine learning is we've got some data. Or we've got basically, OK, we've got a problem. right? And we know that there's some way that with enough number of examples, like a human could say, mm, that's what I bet the answer would be, right? Well, we're going to make it so that the computer's going to do that, right? And that's machine learning. Um, and so we just need to come up with all those examples, and then we need to choose the right uh, algorithm or model um, that's going to give us um, that's going to give us a high accuracy on this problem given those examples, right? And then once we have uh, the right examples and the right um, algorithm uh, that which produced a model um, which has high accuracy, we know that we've basically solved the problem. Um, and so that's the gist of things. And so the, the idea behind this library is that it makes it easy to do all of this, which is gathering all our examples and making the model and training the model and retraining the model and trying different models until we have one that has good accuracy. Um, and then we want to go use that thing, and well, this should make it easy to use. So we've got three pieces here. We've got this data set generation side of things, um, which is powered by directed graph execution. And while well, a directed graph is basically like a flow chart, just like this. Um, and so these directed graphs are, are sequences of things that happen, um, sort of like mostly data scrapey things or data transformation things. So uh, say you've got the name of a city um, and the ice cream sales and the month, and you wanted to predict like what is the ice cream sales in a different city um, in a given month. Well, we'd have some operations maybe that would go and grab the weather for a city given the month, and we could correlate the temperature to the ice cream sales. And then if we get a new city, we have another operation in this directed graph execution thing, which generates the feature data. And one of our features is, is this uh, now the temperature that we're generating based off the city name. So we're taking our existing data set, we're combining it with this new generator thing, um, which is going to generate um, that temperature. And now all of a sudden we have this new data set that has city temperature, month, and ice cream sales. And that way, if I get a new, um, so that would be like generating the whole data set there. And then if I get a new city coming in and somebody says, well, what's what's going to be my ice cream sales in this city? I can uh, give them a, a, predict a prediction on that single record. And that record would basically be, you know, that, that one row in that Excel file or that database, um, which is going to be, you know, what's that city? Um, and so then we go and we scrape the we scrape the ice cream data, or we scrape the uh, weather data, and, and now we can predict how many ice, ice creams we're going to sell. So after we've generated all that data, uh, all those example ref examples, we're going to feed them to these machine learning models. right? And so the first thing we're going to do is this model training. Um, and model training is basically just we're going to give it all the examples, and we're going to give it the thing that we wanted to predict, and uh, then uh, we're just going to like rerun it through this training process, which is different for each model, until it comes out with uh, uh, an accuracy that we like. And so that's the accuracy assessment. Um, so then the other side of this is right once somebody comes in and, and we have this model with high accuracy and we want to use it, uh, now you know, give me a new city, uh, predict me the ice cream sales. That's that prediction using trained model. And then, of course, through all of this, we have to store and load this data somewhere, right? So all of this lives somewhere, right? It might be a CSV file, it might be an Excel file, it might be like an actual database, it might be a JSON file. Um, it could be whatever you want because we've got these abstractions and uh, you can you can store wherever you'd like. Um, so the core features here, like we just talked about, are machine learning, data set generation, and data set storage. And for machine learning, we can do that from the command line. We can do it from Python, or we can do it over HTTP with an HTTP server um, that exposes all of this stuff. Um, so all of these things have the same sort of interface. And as a programmer, you're doing the same type of stuff over and over again. You're just doing it over a different way. Like you're doing it from Python, or you're doing it from the command line. It's sort of the same parameters and everything you're going to be passing, or you're doing it, you know, sending it to an HTTP API. 
API, um, like a, a you know a web service. Um, and so for the data set generation, this is where we 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 have that. Um, wait a minute, my slides didn't advance. Come on now. All right, there we go. Um, so for the data set generation, that's where uh, we're using that directed graph execution in the last slide. And this is a concurrent execution environment with managed locking. And what that means is we're running all of these little functions that scrape like you know the temperature like I was talking about. Um, and we're running all of those uh, at the same time, basically. Well, concurrent is slightly different than parallel, so they're sort of running at the same time. And you can basically think of them as running at the same time. Um, and uh, but for certain things which you can't operate on at the same time, um, then the execution environment will make sure that your functions don't run at the same time, right? So if two things are going to like if two things take a city name and only one can operate on a city name at a time, well then we're going to say a city name requires locking and only one function which takes a city name will run at a time. Otherwise, any time there's a city name, all of them will run at the same time. Um, so we've got, come on now. All right, so we've got this uh, high-level Python API, uh, which basically this is what it looks like when you're when you're actually training the models and assessing the accuracy and making predictions. Uh, we've got, you know, you basically say model equals whatever model you want. Here's the features, which is the input data that we want to train on. So, right, for example, uh, we're saying here like the example. These are the examples, right? Each of one of these is a is an example record, um, and we want to have the model look at the year's expertise and trust, and we want it to have it predict the salary. Um, so it's going to be looking at this data, and it's going to be saying, OK, like given this data, try to predict uh, the number in the salary, right? Um, and so this trains the model, and then we say, OK, well, let's have the model. Uh, let's see what kind of accuracy this model is at. Um, and well, this is a linear model. So as you can see, it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Uh, we provide it with some more examples that are consistent with this linearity for the linear regression model. And of course, we're going to get an accuracy of 100% there. Um, obviously, if we provided different things, we would get a different accuracy. But for the sake of the example, that's what we're doing. Um, then we make a prediction. Uh, and so in this case, we're not going to pass in, uh, you know, what are these, what, what, what is the true salary here, right? Uh, we have just years, expertise, and trust, and we're saying, well, predict me what the salary might be. Um, and as you can see, once again, all of it's linear, so we chose input examples that are going to give us the next in this sequence here. Um, and that's what it looks like, basically, using this stuff from Python. And here, oops, it looks like we are in the middle of this GIF. Um, but I don't know why it doesn't reset the GIF on, uh, on changing the page. So here we're going to do the same thing that we just did um, in Python, but from the command line. Um, and so the first thing we're going to do is we obviously install the, uh, the package. Um, and then we create these training test and predict CSV files, which are comma separated values, kind of like your Excel file type thing. Um, there's the files you can see them listing in the directory. We now train the model. We do the same thing where we say, OK, well, we want the scikit linear reg regression model. Here's the features that I want you to care about as the input data is years, expertise, and trust. I want you to predict the salary, and the source of your data is going to come from this training CSV file. And I turned on some debug logging to show you that, yes, something actually happened. The input number of records was four. Um, you can just see that thing, things happened there. Um, and now we assess the accuracy, change it to the test CSV file, 100%. And then finally, we ask it for a prediction. Um, and so when we do a prediction here, we're going to see the JSON output where we're looking at, OK, there's the salary, and there's the confidence in that prediction. So um, yeah, this is just sort of like updates since October. Um, and uh, we've got, basically, we've got some unsupervised models, which sort of like throw things into different groups. Um, and then we've got some natural language processing models that got added. Uh, we switched from TensorFlow 1 to TensorFlow 2. And we've got this easy to use Python API. And we also have a better tutorial on creating your own models. Um, there's this tool called Should I? It's this metastatic analysis tool. The, what we're going to do with 
Hyatt flows, and they're basically like these graphs, like this, these flow charts. And so you can just think of it like a call graph, right, when you're calling one function. So imagine these ones in the darker purple are functions, and that top package there is uh, a input. So um, you can, you basically would get the input data, which is the package, and we're passing it to these various functions, which are the other shades of purple here. Um, and so those are Every time you see an arrow, it's acting as one of the inputs um, to that uh, function, right? So a safety check takes two inputs. It takes uh, one of the inputs is the package name, and one of the inputs is the version, which is going to come from this uh, PyPy latest package version function. Um, and so basically, anytime you see an arrow going in, that's where uh, the output of, of one function has become the input of another function or we got it from outside the network or like we, we got we were provided it um, instead of having it as an output of a function um, so then the nice thing about these things is that uh, so we can take operations that were written as a part of this should I package um, come on oh, it really doesn't want to change the slides for me it really wants to skip this slide right here All right, well, there's a slide right here that it does not want to show in between these two. Um, I wonder if I can get out of this, if it'll show it. There we go. Um, so basically, we can take this. Oh, I shouldn't have gone back a slide. It doesn't want to update. Oh, well. Um, basically, you saw that last slide, right? How we had mainly just this one without the long arrow pointing to the new one. Yeah. Um, we can extend these data flows and we can basically say, okay, here's all these functions. Here, there's, here's how they're linked together. And now here's some more functions. Uh, throw them all into the same data flow, right? And now we talked about concurrent, which means they're basically running all at the same time. Um, so all of this stuff is basically going to run all at the same time as much as possible. Um, so whenever one of the inputs is available, it's going to run, even if other things are running, because you know it doesn't really matter if other things are running. Let's just get it all done at the same time, so long as you've got your inputs to your function, right? Um, so uh, and that's sort of the end of this status update here, and, and sort of gives you an idea of, of, of what we're doing here. But so yeah, um, and then we can we can cover more of like you know what where where I need your your 